Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Record on two. Um, I'll, I'll, I, I, I presume Guardians is our trailer for this week. Yeah. Yeah. Did All you right. already play it? Right. Well, remind me to record it at the end. I, I kind of played it. You guys, I, I played it so I could know what we're talking about. But, um, so you're gold. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait uh, I'm gold. I am gold, am I? I forgot to pull up the box office numbers. But, uh, okay. Hey, today is July 8th, 2014, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute, where we talk about everything related to movies from the week before, current, and still yet to come. I am Malengo at Rambling Mango, and uh, yeah, I'm in Pittsburgh. Hey, we got uh, Mad Mike. How's it going? Ooga, 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 chaka, ooga, 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 chaka, ooga, 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 chaka. I'm so jealous. Yeah, ha! I'm jealous of me. <laughs> what the I, I'm jealous of me yesterday. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and we also got uh, Mike or Sork. Sork, how's it going? I'm doing well, doing well, Malengo. Uh, uh, looking forward to talking to some movies with you today here on the Rambling Movie Minute. Nice, nice. All right, so starting off with the box office, uh, Transformers held very strong. Oh, man. <laughs> like, like, it wasn't. Like I'm, I'm done because I'm not gonna like argue with people about the crappiness. I had a discussion with somebody at work, and they're like, "This movie was amazing," and I just looked at him and I was like, "Are you serious?" I'm proud of you, world. I'm proud of you. You know why I'm proud, Malenko? Why, why are you proud? First of all, Transformers <laughs> number one, and guess what else is not in the top five? Think like a man too. <laughs> Dropped another fifty-two point eight percent. Yes, crap. it is. Yeah, it's it's just about done. I'm proud of you, Internet. Which is probably for the best. I uh, I thought Tammy might be able to do something, but uh, I was actually able to see it for free, and um, I'm glad I didn't spend money on it. <laughs> so I. I understand these numbers. Although 22 Jump Street, um, I thought that would have a higher higher viewing. They almost lost it to uh, Deliver Us From Evil, which is uh, interesting. Uh, the guy from Community is actually in that, and he was joking about that on E. Uh, he has a, a role where he plays like a psychotic police officer or something like that. Wow. But, um, but yeah, so box office numbers, yeah, Transformers, 37 mil. I mean... I guess this is the week where they get dethroned, but according to what we talked about last week, I mean, Mike's not going to, or Sork's not going to go watch this movie. Mike, are you interested at all with Dawn of the Planet of the Apes? <laughs> no, 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 no. So this this might actually be a pretty good showdown then. Uh, I would only go see Dawn of the Planet of the Apes if I get to, if I got to see it in a drive thru as part of a double feature. Interesting. Yeah, no, I'm I'm excited with this. I think it's a good mix of like weird politics and and turmoil type stuff, and they're apes beating up people. I, so. I'm gonna make a bold prediction. I I think Transformers is gonna hold strong. Mm. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna be curious. I'm gonna I think this movie. I don't think it has an early showing on Thursday. Or in my, I don't know, but I'll be curious to see how this, how these numbers put up because I know I'm pretty sure there's going to be a third uh, Planet of the Apes to round out the trilogy because that's what everybody does now. Is that going to be the one with Troy McClure in it? I'm not sure. Doctor Zayas, Doctor Zayas, Doctor Zayas, Doctor Zayas, Doctor Zayas, Doctor Zayas. Whoa, Doctor Zayas. <laughs> Uh, so this week's show, um, we have a little bit of news, but for the most part, I just wanted to have like an open discussion. Uh, but we'll start off with the first news item, 
Um, Mad Mike, you want to take that one? Oh, <laughs> you mean about Guardians of the Galaxy? No, uh, wait, was it you that put that in the show, the Brandon Roth? Oh, the Brandon Roth, the Brandon Roth thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, as as you all know, on on this show, I am a fan of Arrow. I am a huge fan, and it looks like the good people at Arrow have signed a Superman to play someone else. Hmm. <laughs> Brandon Routh is going to be on Arrow Season 3 as Ray Palmer, a.k.a. The Atom. Which you know is what, super surprising, and I love it. You know what confused me about that article? Um, I actually saw, I think, on Empire, Empire Magazine online or whatever, they had uh, a clipping of that. And at first, like, I think they even dressed him as Superman to say like Superman's going this you know the guy's going to be appearing in uh in Arrow and I literally thought they're just going to like transfer over Superman and have like an appearance. I didn't actually realize that they're just replacing this actor. <laughs> the DC universe makes no sense as it translates between Well, I, that's not necessarily I mean Chris Evans played the Human Torch, and now he's Captain America. This is true. This is true. But I mean, it's not like uh, Brandon Brandon Roth is it? It's not like he's not going to be playing in the Superman vs. Batman. Isn't isn't he our Superman? No, no, no. No, no, no. Uh, no this is the one from uh, the from Superman Returns. Okay, so I'm thinking of a different. Oh, this is the. Uh, mm-hmm. This is the one that yeah. did the punch. Yeah, the it no punching, the no eyeball. punching Superman. So apparently, it's going to be a no punching Adam as well. I just think it's funny that we're getting the Adam on a TV show before Ant Man comes to theaters. <laughs> it feels like Ant Man. I mean, I I know on Ant Man they got two new writers, um, but it feels like that is being set up. I don't know. Maybe it is being set up for success, but I'm like trying to go back and rework this or is it just doomed from the beginning i think at this point it has the marvel seal on it so it's going to make some decent money regardless of what it ends up being but i think they just want ant-man to exist in the marvel cinematic universe so they're just going to put out whatever they can oh well i uh, speaking of Side note on on uh, news. I read an article the other day saying that um, the Star Wars have like a brain trust, like uh, a circle of like elite Star Wars people that are coming through and making sure everything is legit um, within the, the movie universe. And I was reading through some of the comments to that, and some people were kind of like pissed off about it. But for the most part, I think that's pretty cool. That they would gather like the most knowledgeable people about Star Wars together. So to there is towards... there is literally a Jedi Council about the Star Wars movie. Yeah, basically. I like because that's that's kind of what they do with Marvel, right? Like everything goes, needs to go through. Uh, what's the name? Kevin Fe- Feige. Uh, with, Feige. W- Feige uh, with uh, Marvel Studios, and that's how they make sure everything interconnects. So you, you, you and and I don't know. There was some kind of uh, Star Trek. I think had something similar where there's some kind of like writer's bible. You know where 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 they say we do this, we don't do this. Klingons uh, have this history, but not this history. You know, um, and, and and not as large. I don't think it's as large of a task with Star Wars as as, as something like a Star Trek. Uh, but I, I think you definitely need to do it when you get multiple directors. They're all dipping into the same universe. It sounds like they might be going kind of all over a place. You know, uh, rumors about. Uh, uh, going back and do maybe a Boba Fett prequel and, and you know, and then of course this new trilogy, whatever's going to happen here, that's going to be, you know, more, you know, forward thinking. Uh, no, I think that makes sense. I, I, somebody needs to be in charge of that. Or we're going to get a situation like we did with the X-Men movies where there are so many inconsistencies. It's ridiculous. Well, I mean, like I, I'm coming through this article and they're uh, referencing even the, um, John Lasseter from uh, Pixar and how there's a core group of, of uh, Brad Bird, Andrew Staten, uh, these like a, a very small niche of like directors, writers, and, and a small core that have kind of, kind of molded 
the the overall what this is. And I kind of I don't know I think it's a I think it's a great idea. Yes, it might limit to uh, I don't know I don't think it actually stifles anything to creativity if you have creative people that are forging that anyway. So yeah, I'll be I'll be interested because I mean what is this? This would be hypothetically in the Star Wars universe, are, are we seeing a book? Is there a book seven, eight, and nine? Um, not officially. Not officially. I don't think okay. so. But but I, I and I don't know how much because there's been a lot of deliberation about how much of the established canon universe uh, from the books is going to play into this, or are we they're just throwing all that out? And that that's, I've, I've heard that none of the expanded universe is going to be playing yeah. into this. So if it's not in a movie, it doesn't count according to to this. Uh, or, or maybe even, I imagine the cartoons will still count. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know. Well, I mean, the cartoons are between Clone Wars and um, Revenge of the Sith anyway, oh, right? You're forgetting about droids and Ewoks, sir. Oh, it's true. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, basically in this brain trust, uh, in this brain trust, uh, Josh Trank and Gareth Edwards have already been signed for the spinoff movies for mm-hmm. episodes uh, eight and nine. That's cool. So, I mean, they, I guess they're planning way ahead early for uh, very far in the future. And they need to, the make right. done right. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'll talk about Tammy later in the show, but uh, before we get to the big guardians talk, um, I want to hit up on Forbes did an article, and actually I read another article, uh, but on favorite Fourth uh, of July movies. Uh, this Fourth of July, besides watching fireworks and stuffing my mouth with hot dogs and hamburgers, I decided to watch Independence Day, yeah. and that made me that brought up the question. And I, I know Mad Mike, I think you watched it as well. So I was, I was following oh. your Twitter feeds. <laughs> Not only did I watch Independence Day several times this year on 4th of July because there was one movie channel that was just doing a marathon of it all day. <laughs> so when I couldn't find anything to watch, I just put on Independence Day. Every single one of my tweets on the 4th of July was a quote from Independence Day taken out yes. of context. I don't know <laughs> how, but I, I, somehow I got Independence Day on Ultraviolet, so I got to watch it. <laughs> Nice. So, but I, it led to the question of what other movies, if if there is a best movie, but what other movies are there for Independence Day? So Forbes definitely had a list, and that list was not good. <laughs> but I mean, they're they're listing the number one best movie as Rocky, which wow, I don't ever think that had anything to do. I don't think it was even in July. The fight. No, wait, no, wait, wait. So wait, wait, wait. So so. So the, let me let me read this out. So we're talking about Red Dawn, okay? Johnny Tremaine, Yankee Doodle Dandy. They got weird with this. Live free or dark die hard? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Drums along the Mohawk. <laughs> Born on the Fourth of July. Okay, that only makes sense. Jaws. Again, I don't. Is get it, it? Are we just saying patriotic movies or movies that came out on the Fourth of July? Because I think we're just that on the Fourth of July holiday. I don't know about Jaws that. Period. I don't know. But I, even so, you know what else came out on the Fourth of July holiday? Independence Day. Yeah. <laughs> it is listed here. Got the, if I you're think, gonna see a movie on the Fourth of July that represents the Fourth of July, you see the one. Basically called the 4th of July. <laughs> Agreed. Right? I mean, uh, the funny thing was the Patriots. Somebody mentioned that in the uh, in the Facebook group. And I, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Like the Patriot. Mm-hmm. Sure. But, I mean, come on. Hands down. Independence Day. It has it all. Explosions. President punching people. Epic speech. Mm-hmm. Will Smith. The only, the only thing Independence Day doesn't have is a gratuitous boob shot, and they come pretty close. They come pretty close. <laughs> so, it's I mean, true. That's why Die Hard is a perfect movie. That's why Die Hard uh, is a perfect movie. Die Hard is everything. Movie. Although Die Hard doesn't do any kind of days. That's, it's just action. Die Hard's great. 
Um, hey, all right, let's talk. Let's talk uh, Guardians. I saw the extended trailer or the extended, yeah, uh, teaser trailer, or whatever, and uh -huh. that got me pumped up. I was not as fortunate as some people who may or may not live in the state of New York. Mm. We were able to see 17 minutes, almost a full half hour, minus 13 minutes. So fill us in. What what can we expect besides uh, our minds being blown? That's actually how I was going to start it off. But um, <laughs> um, I, I won't give away spoilers because there really wasn't anything in the scene that we could see that was really spoiler worthy. Um, basically, because from the from the trailer, you know they're criminals. Uh, the scene they showed us was the guardians breaking out of prison. Okay, that was the scene they showed us. I, the prison looked like the most Eisley Cantina, which was amazing. Like it, it awesome. had all sorts of different crazy aliens and everything like that. Um, Rocket Raccoon talks a lot. He talks a whole lot, and Bradley Cooper, like you know, you know when you when you watch something where a guy who doesn't really have voice acting experience, you can usually tell who that actor is. Yeah, like Shrek, you can tell that's Mike Myers. Fiona, you can tell that's Cameron Diaz. Donkey is clearly Eddie Murphy. I didn't hear Bradley Cooper in the voice of Rocket Raccoon. I just heard Rocket Raccoon. Like it was. Yeah, it really, really well done. Um, Chris Pratt is hilarious, and they showed us the scene where um, they're, you know, it, the scene started off with the scene that has almost been in every trailer. Like, they call him Star-Lord, like, you know, the whole lineup of everything. And the middle finger is not blurred in the movie, which is nice. <laughs> it is not blurred in the movie. It is just, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know how this machine worked. Was, but, um... the the rating for this movie was PG-13, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, this movie was rated PG-13, right? I believe so, yeah. So, Gail, uh, this movie definitely transcends the uh, just the prison, right? We see more, a little bit more of that movie, right? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, even the prison alone... The scale of the prison is huge, like because everything is was uh, scaled for IMAX. Yeah. So it, it was oh, ridiculous. I see. So that, so I mean, that of course leads into what we should see this movie on. So you, what do you recommend? Uh, after seeing this, this seventeen minutes, I'm seeing it in IMAX 3D. So definitely see it in 3D. That's yep. the key thing here. So spend the extra five or six dollars to dish out fifteen bucks to go see this movie. That's that good. You're you're saying it's it's Iron Man one level good. All just, right. Just from what like because the team chemistry like they weren't even really a team during this prison break. Like you could tell some of them were just like having a conversation with each other for the first time. But the chemistry all five actors had was phenomenal. The humor was very prevalent. Um, the soundtrack was there. Uh, we got, oh my God, there was just so much, so much good in the 17 minutes that they showed. It's, I'm not going to say it's the best part that they could have shown us from the movie because I haven't seen the rest of the movie. Yeah, yeah. But, but it was a damn fine showing. Like, I'm, I'll put it to you this way. If Star Wars Episode Seven is anything less than this, oh, then, man. <laughs> then, then Star Wars has failed as a franchise. So what you're saying is the bar is extremely high. I, I was excited before this movie. Not knowing much about Guardians of the Galaxy or anything, just based on the fact that the trailers looked very funny, that you have Rocket Raccoon, you have Groot, you have Star Lord, and he's like a cocky Han Solo Iron Man type of character. But seeing them all together, 
oh my god, everything just clicked. Just freaking and the action, amazing. Uh, Zoe Saldana is a green skinned badass. Um, and I, I'm gonna say, even though I know they're pushing Rocket Raccoon and Star Lord, I think the breakout character of this movie is going to be Groot. Oh, really? I really think it is because the there were two huge laughs that in the 17 minutes we saw, like two huge guffawing type laughs that really knocked us all on our heads. Okay. And and one of them was just something very simple uh, pertaining to Groot, and it was perfect. It's ah, uh, it's so 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 good. That wasn't what we saw in the extended trailer where he starts eating himself, kind of. No. No. <laughs> no. 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 That was uh, that was in the that was in the extended trailer we saw after the footage. So the one uh, screen rant, um, a site that I recommend to anybody who likes movies, um, they posted an article saying basically kind of along the lines of uh, for the. 4X, this is basically, I would sum it up as a gateway drug to more Marvel characters. Um, and I kind of agree with that. It seems like with what you saw in 17 minutes, this movie could open the door for a crap load of potentially good characters. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Especially in the context that we're given, like, the five, the five of them, because I mean, Avengers was a different animal where you kind of had to introduce everyone separately. Yeah. We didn't. The only introduction we got was the scene that's been almost every trailer where they just do the lineup. Yeah, yeah. Like, and they just give a brief description of each of them, and then, boom, we're thrown. They're thrown in a cell together like that, and and Rocket has a plan to escape, and he tells everyone what to do, and everyone enacts it like it. It, oh my god, there's just so many good things about it. Like, it, if they wanted to sell this movie based on the 17 minutes, I almost think they should release the 17 minutes and have let everyone see it. Because it could, like, double what they would bring in over the yeah. weekend, I think. Well, I mean, most, I'm, that's why I'm still thinking they'd release it the week of. Yeah. But, but oh my god, it's so good. Well, I mean, yeah. Like I said, um, the the article, uh, if you look up Screen Rant, I think they have it on their main page. But, you know, they're saying uh, potential spinoffs, crossovers, sequels. The only thing I would be concerned with, which at this point I don't think I really care, because I grew up in an age where I would actually go to the library and read just after school, read hours of, like, comic books. And, I mean, so for me, this is just a comic book on the big screen. And I'm totally okay with that. Oh so. yeah, it absolutely is. It's um, it's Marvel's Star Wars. Regardless of what J.J. Abrams was doing, this is Marvel's Star Wars. Like, it it's so much fun. Like that is the main thing that I can pull away from it. Like, it's just super amounts of fun, and you can tell there's some depth to each to each of the characters because mm -hmm. like they get into like Gamora's background and how she's kind of you know, at odds, because as soon as they get into the prison, everyone's pissed off at Gamora, and they start throwing stuff at her, because <laughs> she, because of who she is. But, um, like, th this gets into a lot, I think it's going to play into Avengers 3 a lot. Nice. Um, I, I, it's, it's just... Like, it's a gateway so drug. It, yes. It has the potential to lay in. To be honest, it's going to be interesting to see with DC's um, Batman, Superman versus Batman. I don't like the bar might be so set so high that it would almost take like a failure from Marvel to get DC back in it. Because after seeing the last two Superman movies, clearly people aren't impressed. And ever since Nolan's um, Batman. And even the third Batman, a lot of people weren't, like, super thrilled with it. So it's almost like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't, I don't know. This, this could be, you know, this could be a game changer in terms of the kind of movies we get. Well, I mean, 
me and my me and my friend who saw it, we sat around and talked about it afterwards. We're like, we're in a world where Marvel is selling a rocket raccoon mask for children, and John C. Riley is a member of the Nova Corp, and Patton Oswalt is a member of Shield. And yeah. yet DC is saying, oh no, we're not ready for a Wonder Woman solo movie yet. Yeah. Which yeah, which is beyond crazy. So I mean, just looking at to DC's credit though, like I'm not caught up with Arrow, but what I've seen of Arrow is very convincing. I saw the trailer for Flash. I'm I think I would be interested in that. I'm interested in Gotham, although a lot of people have complained about not being sure what they'll get from that. In terms of the television side of things, you know, I, I'd say I'd be more likely to watch those over Agents of Shield, even though Agents of Shield, I hear, has gone very up in their curve from when they started to where they're at now, which yeah. is all playing on this will just propel them more. So I'm very excited to see like what comes from this, I guess. Well, in terms of TV shows, like, I, I am not looking forward to Gotham, but I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt just based on how much I enjoy Arrow and how much I did enjoy Smallville. Like, DC has done very well on the small screen. Yeah, yeah. Even with their animated projects and with their animated uh, directed oh, yeah. movies. Definitely, definitely. So, I mean... Like, I almost, I almost wish that DC would just do, instead of live-action movies... Full-length animated movies. And yeah, give them, like, I mean, actually give them like actual budgets. Give them like a two-hour runtime, and I think you can make an animated Justice League movie infinitely better than whatever Batman versus Superman is going to be. Yeah, which is sad. I mean, yeah. well, no, uh, it's it's not really sad. It's it's well, more of a product of what they built because back in the '90s, DC animated, you had Mark Hamill as the Joker. You had um, uh, Kevin Conroy as Batman. You had Tim Daly yeah. as Superman. For a lot of people, though, that's that's their Batman. That's their Superman. Yeah. Well, I mean, it could be a question of had the tide, have the times uh, kind of swayed. Is this just a pendulum swinging? And are we? Because back in those movies, I don't remember a Marvel movie that was at all as big as the 90s Batman, even no matter how bad they were. Oh, no. No, like, Marvel Marvel, Marvel anime had, had the Spider-Man and the X-Men show, but, I mean, as much as I personally love them, just for nostalgia regions, you can't go back and watch those. They're yeah, horrible. Yeah. <laughs> They're horrible. But you can, like, Batman the Animated Series has infinite rewatch, uh, infinite rewatch value. Yeah, definitely. Uh, um, and Hot Wheels in the chat room says he loves Agent of Sealed, and I have to agree with him. Um, it had it has a slow start, but once you get past the events of Captain America two, Agents of Shield jacks up like like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, and like I said, the curve has just been like a, I don't even know if it was gradual. It was almost like the last what like five or six episodes before Avengers or not Avengers two before um, Cap Captain America just built to their where they're at now which well, is yeah it's amazing. because on, it's because on the show like they were not allowed to mention hydra until the episode after captain america 2 yeah and then, and then once you mention that hydra is involved with everything then the doors just blow off all of the plot holes kind of go away because you're like oh hydra's been doing shit the whole time so you know, one thing that I, I'm i going to play devil's advocate, or not devil's advocate, but one thing I'm concerned of is when Heroes came out, Heroes <laughs> had this huge, like, up, like, they did a great job of integrating the comic strip on the web and, you know, integrating, like, nuggets in here. But the problem they started to run into was if you miss certain things in the comic, like they would post, it would be tied into the show. Mm -hmm. and it was kind of like, did I need to like follow up with that? I'm hoping we don't get that with the future Marvel movies pertaining to the Avengers. 
and maybe Captain America. Like, I don't want to have to go back and watch all of, you know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to, to get, like, oh, that's where that character's plot came from, or that's why we're... I mean, I don't think they would do that, but that all ties into their gross income as a brand, and that's, I don't know, that's playing devil's advocate. That would be interesting if it's like, oh, yeah, you're going to want to go back and watch season two to get X, well, Y, and Z's character. I think the only the only real instance of that thus far is you almost can't finish the first season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. without seeing Captain America. Yeah. But, but they do go into what happened in Captain America. So if you haven't seen it, they do say what happened. They just give you the short, 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 short version of it. Okay. So it's more of a, like, I'm okay if the arc flows that way. If the movies are always hierarchy and then we, we trickle down. So it's like, hey, we're referring to the movie. I just don't want it to be the reverse where, hey, if, to see this movie, you have to watch season three or, you know, whatever. Well, I mean, the good thing about that is, and the reason I don't think you're going to have to worry about that much is because you do have Joss Whedon doing the pull together movies. Mm -hmm. Like he's doing like, like, I mean, you watch Avengers. If you haven't seen Captain America and you don't know anything about what the Tesseract is, there's a little scene right after Loki shows up where Fury talks to Captain America and he's like, Hey, we have this Tesseract, you know, is there anything you can tell us about it? And it's like, yeah, you should have left it in the ocean. You just yeah. get the sense that it's a bad, bad thing that Loki has it. And even if you haven't seen Thor, you obviously know who Loki is from the trailers. And and even they say, Loki, brother of Thor. Like, okay, boom. That's all we need to know. He's the Definitely. brother of Thor. He and Thor have fought. Like they, they do get the, in the Avengers movie. They do give a little bit of backstory, like just a, enough of a nugget for people who haven't seen all of them to still get it. Nice. Well, hey, um, let's move on uh, since we could probably talk about comic book related stuff for. Oh, quite I, some I time. could talk about Guardians <laughs> for for so long. <laughs> Um, so let's uh, let's go into what we watch. Well, basically, before we get into that, this weekend, like we said before, Planet of the Apes is coming out. I'm excited to see that, but my other two co-hosts do not care as much, and we'll probably be waiting for it to show up on our red box. If that. <laughs> if so that. I think I think it will be a good throwdown. Uh, definitely going to be uh, following up on the numbers to see how that actually goes head to head. Um, I think Planet of the Apes will hold its ground, but uh, as, my, as Mad Mike states, he thinks Transformers will uh, pull it out for I mean, a third week on number one. I'm probably going to be wrong, but at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if Transformers was number one. It's definitely going to be number two. Yeah. I don't see any of the other movies from last week bumping up. So it's definitely going to be number two, but I think it might be closer than people think. Nice, nice. All right, so uh, before I get into my review of Tammy, um, what did you watch this weekend? Well, I finally got to see How to Train Your Dragon 2. Nice. And what did you think of it? It was amazing. It was cool. amazing. Um, I'm not sure if it was dusty in the theater that I saw it, but I started tearing up a little bit. Uh <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it uh, had we to be can't, a lot we of can't get into spoilers about that. No, I'm not, that. I'm not saying why why I teared up. I I maintain that it was dust, but the movie was very very good. Uh, we saw it in 3D, which I, I, I think helped it a lot. Like it, it yeah. looked good in 3D. It looked really good. That was one of those where I thought about it, and I, I usually go see animated features in 3D. Mm -hmm. um, if I think they're going to be worth it. And that's the one that I probably would have spent the extra money to yeah, go see I, in 3D. I wish I saw Frozen in 3D, but getting to see this one in 3D, I think I made up for it. Nice. Did you see anything else? besides? Yeah. Uh, I, I saw Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. The first I, one or second one? The first one. Um, I, wanted, I want to watch the second one, but 
I had never seen the first one, so I wanted to um, get a grasp of it. And it came on ABC Family. So I DVR'd okay. it, and I watched it, and it was cute. It, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I think the second one, I think the second one, you'll appreciate that one a lot more. Yeah. Um, the first one, from what I could remember, was definitely just a kid's movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. The first, like, the second one I've heard much better things about than the first one. But I wanted to, you know, get the backstory, even though I'm pretty sure I could have figured it out. But yeah. I, it, was, it was fun. It was, it was a cute, it was a cute, tri- it was a cute kid's flick. Uh, definitely some good, some good humor in there. And I really liked it. I kind of wish I saw it in theaters when I had a chance. Yeah. And right. I, also, I also saw one more movie. Um, oh, what'd you see? Uh, it's 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 a teenage um, like college comedy called A Hundred Girls. Okay. It's kind of like a lo- in the same vein as like the American Pie movies and things of that nature. But uh, it's a story about how this guy is in the elevator of a woman's dormitory, and the power goes out, and he ends up um, having a physical relationship with this girl who is in the elevator with him, but he never got a chance to see her face. Oh, jeez. <laughs> no, because, because she was bringing her laundry in, and then as soon as the power went out, you know, they spent hours in the in the elevator together, and she, she ducked out before he woke up in the morning. So the whole movie is him trying to figure out who this girl in the elevator was. And it's actually pretty interesting. Uh, there's some good talk about like the difference between men and women and things like that. It's yeah. a little raunchy, uh, but it's got Catherine Heigl in it. It's got uh, Larissa Olenek from Alex Mack and 10 Things I Hate About You. It's got um, Emmanuel Shikri from uh, Entourage and a okay. few other things. But it's it's just a fun it's a fun flick. I think it was on... Uh, Encore on demand. Okay. Well, that'll be one. Um, I'll definitely try and check out if I can. Um, yeah. So, besides, some two movies that I saw: Transcendence um, with Johnny Depp. So, yeah. So basically, that's a weird movie because <laughs> it, I think um, I would love to see. Let me see real quick. I would love to see what it got as on the tomato uh, meter rating for that movie because I think it did horribly, but not to any fault of the fact that Johnny Depp didn't really have to act that much. And I mean, he played a he played a computer uh, virtual. He played himself virtually as a computer program. Uh, Paul Bentley was in. Uh, Paul Bettany was in this. Yeah. Morgan Freeman confuses me because for some reason he's also going to be in um, uh, what's what's it? Lucy. Lucy. Yeah. And I think he's in another movie where this whole like mind concept of unlocking your mind, like he's like the like he's become like the the black token godfather of like intellect. Oh, well, all right. Uh, well, all right. You want to know how true that is? In the, in the game Cards Against Humanity, uh, there's a card that says advice from a wise old black man. I just, I just picture Morgan Freeman. Yes. Like, that's also... literally who I picture in, in anything where I need to know backstory and just someone to lay down some track for the, ty- for the, for the plot of the yeah. movie. I just picture Morgan Freeman. Even in now, now you see me, or is that the movie, the the yep. magic one? Yeah, yep. where he's the the. This is how the magic tricks are done. Like, uh-huh. oh my gosh, Morgan Freeman, thank you so much for <laughs> that. Um, this movie, that, I'm on, that graphic that Sorg has up right now, it's amazing. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm missing it. Oh yeah. Oh man. <laughs> yes, Morgan. Like it, it started with Shawshank. Let's be honest. Like. And then Andy Dufresne crawled to a river of shit smelling foulness I can't even fathom. Like, and that's a horrible Morgan Freeman. I'm aware of that. But, but oh, anytime you need exposition in a movie, you go to Morgan Freeman because he will steer you right. Oh, gosh. He's yeah, Ron Tomato. twice. Ron Tomato. Oh, yeah, he has. Oh, my gosh. Like, God Morgan twice. Freeman was so good playing God. Let's have him come back. You want to know how good Morgan Freeman was as playing God? He played the God of Legos. 
He played the god of Legos. Oh, man. He came back as a ghost Lego god. <laughs> Was he? Did he end up being the president in the Olympus Has Fallen? No. Was he the president? No, right. he was just like an advisor. No, he I was think. the president in Deep Impact. Oh, man. The guy. Well, Transcendence. Transcendence had a 19% on Rotten Tomato. That's um, not good. That's I not good. Cam, I think Cammy had a higher percentage on Rotten Tomato. <laughs> yeah. Basically, here's the thing with Transcendence. And it's on its bare principle of plot. Like, the script comes to Johnny Depp and he picks it up and he starts reading. He's like, oh my gosh, this is a brilliant idea. I'm sure the concept of this would be brilliant. I would love to do this. And then the movie is produced and it does not live up to, <laughs> to what it did not transcend its potential. <laughs> nicely done. Nicely done, Malengo. <laughs> Oh, that, that's man. Oscar Wilde wordplay you get here on the Rambling Movie Minute. Uh, I don't know. I would, I would almost say if this movie came on on television and you're just kind of sitting there and you literally have nothing to do and you're trapped beneath a fallen bookshelf <laughs> and it you between your couch and you cannot reach the remote to turn on local news or anything, watch this movie. <laughs> wow, that... That's a new rating. That's a new rating. <laughs> so we have theater, drive-in, um, uh, uh, matinee, red box, Netflix, and trapped under a bookcase. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, like, I don't know. Between that and Tammy, I would definitely pick Transcendent. It was just saying something. The, wow. I feel like the – okay. All right. To give it credit, I think what happened was – the plot was so good that the story actually gets away. It's almost like the director doesn't really know how to continue the movie in a way that can conclude it. And so the way he concludes it, it's just so like, like lip that you're kind of just like, man, I sat through an hour and 40 something minutes for like nothing. And I think that's, that's a, the problem. It doesn't leave you feeling anything. It's kind of just like, all right, well, there are some cool things there and cool ideas, but they didn't really fulfill what they could have. Um, okay. to, but compared to Tammy, oh, my gosh. I don't know. Now, I don't know what happened. Now, is Tammy just, like, a really bad retread of Tommy Boy? Um, I mean, not – no, because Tommy Boy, at least you leave the movie feeling happy. I think they took the playbook, though, from Tommy Boy and tried to retool this to something that Melissa McCarthy could play in. So it's yeah. Tammy Girl? Yeah, basically. <laughs> okay. I mean, like, all right, so she has her jokes, which are hilariously – they're good. They're good for what she is. But in the context of a story, like, I mean, they had – uh, Susan Sarandon, I probably butchered her name, but she's a great actor. They had her, they had Kathy Bates in this. I mean, they had like Mark uh, Duplass from uh, uh, Scooby Doo movies. Well, yeah, but even more <laughs> recently, uh, the football thing, the draft, or not the draft. draft but, no, no, no. He's on, on FX. Oh, um, the league. The league, yeah. Okay. They had amazing – I'm not going to say amazing. But they had really good actors, but I almost feel like they were doing this as a either, well, we got nothing on our plate right now, or we're kind of just bored, or we owe you a favor, and you'll have to give us back, repay that favor in the form of an appearance at some later time to be undisclosed. This movie goes nowhere. You <laughs> you could literally just pull out the jokes. All right, Malengo, Malengo. I just have one final question about Tammy. Hit me. Literally she, hit me. Does she get her damn apple pies? She does get her apple pies. And Good, that's, she, all, that's all I care about. She decides to return some of them, but she's eaten half of them. Of course. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't even know what we were supposed to learn. I, I think we were supposed to find ourselves. I, I found know. myself not in that theater. 
Yes. So uh, if you were thinking about going to see Tammy, please don't. <laughs> go see 22 Jump Street or How to Train Your Dragon 2. Oh, uh, yes. Go. Yes, definitely. Those two. How about this? So I feel sorry because I actually like Melissa McCarthy, but I – yes. As somebody who has never actually made a movie myself – and I don't like being a harsh critic, I can definitely say this movie sucks. Okay. <laughs> All right. So with that, um, yeah, I'd say that's the show, right? Yeah, I think so. I don't think Sword came back, did he? Or maybe just in, in background. But anyway, where can we find you, Mad Mike? Uh, well, you can find me at Mad Mike 4883 on the Twitters. I am not doing Independence Day quotes anymore. However, if you can think of a movie that you'd like me to do an all-day quoting tweet-a-thon from, let me know. Maybe Die yes. Hard. Maybe Die Hard on Christmas. <laughs> That'd be great. Also, um, we have a Facebook uh, group, The Rambling Movie Minute, on yes. Facebook. It's a cool group where we ask questions and a good, great way to get involved with the show. And eventually, at some point, I think we should uh, pick a fan from from the site and have them pop on the show as like our special guest. I think that'd be a good thing to do. Uh, but yeah, definitely go and uh, like that and get involved. Uh, tell us what movies you're watching and you know stuff. Also, uh, you can find me at rambling mango on twitter and uh my site which i do weird reviews of the movies from the past week in comic book form uh, i did not do one for tammy because i saw it last night but uh i should be doing one soon i'm and pretty sure I, a blank panel is all you really need to say for Tammy. yeah it'll just be a, a trail of apple pies <laughs> uh, <laughs> that go well, nowhere i got it <laughs> But, uh, yeah, with that, um, have a great movie weekend. Uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, we'll see you next week where we will ramble some movies. <laughs> <laughs>